This week we talked about gender equality and how it will take 300 years to achieve it. For our last story today, we have something that looks like a step forward in the right direction. For the first time in history, women are represented in every parliament around the world. Now this is based on data from 47 countries that held elections last year. Women took about 26% of the available seats. In simpler terms, one in four lawmakers worldwide are, are now women. One in four, which does not sound like very much, but we'll take a win where we can, even if it's a small win. It's a 2% increase from the previous year. And it's up from one in five women lawmakers in the year 2011. So now let's ask the golden question. How was this achieved? And we found that there was one decisive factor, quotas. They seem to have worked when quotas, either legislative or voluntary, required a minimum number of female candidates. Around 31% of women were elected to parliament. In countries with no quotas, women representation was about 21%. And this was not the only factor. Some others were also at play, like increased awareness of discrimination and attention to gender-sensitive and family-friendly policies due to COVID. But 26% is the average number. There were variations across the world. The Americas had the maximum growth, about 35%. And some countries showed significant progress, like Australia. They have a historic record, about 57% seats won by women in the Senate in Australia. In other regions, growth stalled, like in Europe. Women's representation remained at 31% in 15 European countries. This has largely been the trend since 2017. What about Asia? Wide divides characterized outcomes in Asia. Senate in Japan saw record numbers of women elected, which is quite the feat, because this has historically been a male-dominated area in Japan. Meanwhile, India, the world's most populous democracy, remained in the lowest quartile in the world, with less than 3% increase. Big or small, growth in women's parliamentary representation is now a worldwide phenomenon. The question is, is it enough? What about gender parity? Well, that remains an elusive goal. Only six countries in the world have achieved it so far. They have an equal number of men and women in parliament. These countries are New Zealand, Cuba, Mexico, Nicaragua, Rwanda, and the United Arab Emirates. At the current rate, it could take 80 years for the rest of the world to catch up. What's stopping this from happening? Sexism, harassment, violence against women, lack of awareness, the list goes on. But this is a dawn of change, really, for women in politics. And this growth can be accelerated. So how do we get more women in politics? Apart from quotas, women can benefit from targeted training or financial support. Concrete policies to support working parents can help. Community programs can help foster leadership skills and feminist policies can be introduced. They provide a framework for gender-related strategies, and they have immense potential. They've also become a growing trend. The latest case is Germany. It has released a feminist foreign policy. It aims to invest in gender equality through development policy. Some other countries have also introduced policies like these, like Sweden, Canada, France, Mexico. We know that politics does not work in isolation. It affects all facets of the society. So more women in politics means policies that help women everywhere, in all walks of life. Just by sheer inspiration, other areas could also see more women in leadership roles. It has a domino effect. Because you can't be what you can't see. Representation can make a world of difference. Of course, there is no, no one-size-fits-all solution here, but there's plenty that can and should be done.